Well, what are the uses of stat? Well, the collection of data has its use. Okay? Uh, you need data because, you know, just like what I said, you cannot manage something with, when you have not measured it, when you have not measured it. So that is basically one purpose of the census. They are collecting basic information about incomes, about the sizes of family uh, from each household. Well, you don't just collect data. Uh, raw data by themselves are not useful. You want to process data, and by processing them, they will produce a useful information, such as the size of population per region, per year, okay? Population from urban areas and population from rural areas. So this one is an example of an information that arose after processing a set of data. And the data that can help produce this are the sort of data that is collected in a census. Produce information about the general characteristics of the population. You know, instead, they call it population because population has to do with people. That is the etymology of the word population, it's people. Because in the old days, when they do stat, when the statista, the statesman, collect data, it's, it's usually data that is concerned about people. But with stat, modern-day practice of stat, when we say population, it need not be a set of people. It can be a set of animals. It can be a set of plants. So the Philippine Statistical Authority, they, for example, measure the quantity of of rice production in a year. They also measure the quantity of goods that are produced each month. So the population there are are the goods and services that are being produced in our country in our country monthly. So when we talk about population in stat, it's not always really about the population of people. It can be a population of living things, non-living things. It can also be a population of events. How many incidents of fire takes place in the city each week, for example? So that is an event, and that is a set, the incidents of fire. So this one would be information, okay, information that will be revealed after you process a set of data. And this one is information about the leading causes of death in our country. So the first cause of that would be the diseases that has to do with the heart. The next one is a vascular system. So it's, that's why you call it cardiovascular diseases. Vascular has something to do with blood vessels. Communication of information. So the uses and purposes of STAT is not just to gather information or, or gather data, process data. More important than that is to convey the results of your analysis, to convey information, to communicate information in a way that will be understood by your targeted audience. This one, for example, is, is the National Vital Statistics. This one came from World Health Organization. And this is the... This is about the leading causes of death in the world, okay? But this one is not shown in the form of the table. This is being communicated in the form of a pie chart, okay? So we will study this. When do you convey an information using charts, using tables, and other forms of communication? Another uses or purpose of STAT is making inferences about the future, future events and trends. Okay, so this one is another way of communicating information. Again, this is about the leading causes of death. Okay, so making inferences about future events and trends. We, we see a lot of this today. You know, professionals who are concerned with managing uh, epidemics, they are concerned about what's going to happen in the future. What's going to happen with the rise in COVID-19 infection? And so they are making a lot of projections based on existing conditions and based on conditions that they are not doing. 
if we did not do this, what's going to happen? And using the data that is available, data that are, of course, collected using valid uh, methods from STAT, they are making projections using, again, methods that came from STAT about what might happen in the future. So that is one important use of STAT, is to make inferences about future events and trends. So these are the organizations and institutions that keep huge data. The Philippine Statistics Authority. They have a database there. Huge database, believe me. Uh, for many sorts of economic activities, for, for many uh, dimensions of our social life, they have uh, information there. Government institutions in general, they keep a lot of data, huge data. Schools, universities, and hospitals, okay? You know what schools, as far as information is concerned, schools are not just like a department store, okay? You know, you go to store and then you leave. But not so with, with schools. You go to school and you stay there for the next four years to finish your education. And you submit so many information there, your vital statistics, okay, your name, your, your parents' name, their income, so on and so forth, your age. And the university keeps them. So the university is a source of huge uh, data that has statistical importance. And so with hospitals. You know, one of the stressful uh, thing about going to hospitals, if you are bringing somebody there, is the first order of business in a, ho in a hospital is to fill in some piece of paper. That is data. And that is why hospitals employ a professional statistician. We have some employees here in our school. They used to be math teachers, but they are now employed by hospitals as the official statisticians of their institutions.